What's up? My name is Jimmy Wong. I'm one of the co-hosts of the Command Zone podcast alongside Josh Lee Kwai. I'm Josh Lee Kwai, the co-host of the Command Zone podcast. My name is Josh Kim, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Craig Blanchett. I'm a co-creator of Top Decking. I do a show called All Chat with Jimmy. I'm Mr. Infect. So our good friend Trick Jarrett from Wizards of the Coast was awesome, and he sent us a package. We are about to open up Commander 2016. We've got it pretty early, and we decided that we're gonna call some friends, get them all over here, sleeve up the decks, don't change them at all. To tell you guys how they play right out the box, no additions or anything, and just see what happens with these new four color commanders. So I rolled the dice to decide what deck, or what order I'd pick the decks, and I got the first roll, so I went with Atraxa, which is the commander that I talked about on the podcast and did a whole deck breakdown. So I knew the deck really well. The proliferate trigger is really awesome, but also, like, it's got Vigilance, Flying, Death Touch, and Life Link. So, like, you're gaining four every single time you ding someone, you're doing commander damage. So I thought it'd be a good way to, like, at least, it's always going to be a good blocker, and you can always attack with it. I rolled, and I was the second pick. So I had my eye on Kaneos and Tiro the entire time, just because they're kind of a, a deck that I wouldn't normally choose because they're kind of the group hug deck and, and they sort of help your opponents a little bit. I thought that that would be fun to try out. I got to pick third, which Saskia was still around, so I picked her. It just seems so super powerful to be able to be like, point all your people at the weak player, drop Saskia and attack the one person and possibly get the other person out at the same time. I ended up getting Idris, which is, uh, which is neat. Um, because I rolled the <laughs> the smallest numbers, so I got to choose last. So, so I was really happy that I ended up getting the general that I wanted. Um, I actually went with the partner pair of Vile Smasher and Kideli. Kidel I don't know how to say her name, <laughs> but I went with those two because uh, um, one, I thought that having a general that can ramp you on turn four uh, seemed like a really good start, and. Um, it, you just in his deck uh, when I was looking through it really quickly. It didn't seem like there was a lot of ways to like really abuse uh, his mechanics. So I thought that having something a little more vanilla with the uh, partner pair was going to be a little better. Let's do this. All right, Craig. Craig, it's on Let's you. Did you keep? You oh, I'm keep keeping. Okay, right, right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just asking. That's right. I got a good hand. Okay. Dragon Skull Summit tapped. Play forest. Go play opulent palace. Play Christian Virtue. So I got off to a little bit of a slow start compared to everybody else. Um, you know, I think people were playing like Rampant Growth, Felwar Stone, Signets. They got some two mana ramp out. I'm pretty sure I'm going to turn four Atraxa here. Man, look at this guy. He's turned four Atraxa. <laughs> <laughs> mana Gorger Hydro. What? God, this is right, bro. It's okay, everybody don't cast spells. Yeah, I got lucky by getting like Mandagorger Hydra is one of the best cards in this whole set. So I got the tracks out, I couldn't proliferate anything, but it didn't really matter because against Craig's Mandagorger Hydra, it essentially gave me a two turn buffer where Craig didn't want to swing into me and lose his Mandagorger Hydra because of the death touch, even though it still would have dealt trample damage and it ended up being probably the most important part of me staying alive for the rest of the game. The problem really was just Mandagorger Hydra. It was already like an 8-8. Eight, eight. It just came out so big and was hitting so hard and Craig aimed it at me pretty early. Managorger at Josh Lee Kwai. So, you know, I was scrambling trying to come up with an answer for that. I didn't really find one. I put out a sphere of safety to kind of make him pay one mana to attack me, but he was just like, okay, I'll pay one mana and hit you for like 57,000. So that didn't work out so great. Early on, I played a bounce land, uh, which means that uh, you have eight cards in hand because you have to bounce a land back to your hand. And I discarded Cruel Entertainment. And uh, uh, it's a CMC seven card and it's a perfect target for Volcanic Visions um, because it's a huge CMC sorcery. Uh, so I was hoping to use that board wipe that affects my opponents uh, for seven damage to all their creatures. I thought that would be enough. Turns out 10 is a bigger number than seven. And so, uh, well, Candy Visions for seven wasn't gonna get there. <laughs> so I played this card called Frenzied Fugue. It lets you steal somebody else's creature, give it haste, and you get it at the beginning of your upkeep every t every turn that you have. I was able to gain control of Atraxa every turn, so I had the proliferate trigger with the Mana Gorger Hydra, like, it was ins it was ridiculous. So, there is a card called Fathom Mage. Anytime a plus one plus one character is put on it, you get to draw a card. And no one had anything to deal with the Mana Gorger Hydra, so I was like, I have to just draw into it. Um, so I started doubling all the counters on Fathom Mage with uh, Boral of the Whole Clade. So I was drawing four cards, the next turn I drew eight cards. The one kind of cool play I was able to pull off was I played Tempt with Discovery, 
And it was a gamble because I was, I think I was dead on board or close to it from the Mana Gorge or Hydra with no answer. And so I played it, I played one land. Everybody else decided to put a land into play. So I was able to go and find four total lands to put into play. And one of them was Homeward Path. And the thing is that Craig had played that Frenzied Fugue card on Atraxa, Jimmy's Atraxa. And so he was using it every turn to attack and then proliferate. And so what I could do is that gave me a little bit of negotiating power because I could homeward path a tracks up back to Jimmy on Craig's turn so he wouldn't get the proliferate trigger. It's a little thing, but it managed to just, I got enough negotiating power to say, hey listen, just don't kill me this turn. Otherwise I'll homeward path. You can still kill me, but you won't get as much value. And he was like, fine, I'll try and kill Jimmy and Josh Kim. I got smashed. I got my face like beat mercilessly in. Josh Kim had the biggest board at, at that point. I think he had like five or six creatures out. He was in a threatening position, but he had them all untapped. Um, Saskia was played and she pointed at me. I named Josh Kim. So whenever one of his creatures deals combat damage to not Josh Kim, it will also deal damage to Josh, Josh Kim. Kim. Oh boy. Oh no. It's all over, boys. Craig swung out at Jimmy, and Jimmy blocked just enough to still kill me off the Saskia trigger, uh, but keep himself alive. I chump blocked on the 10 10 and just took every single point of damage from the Mana Gorgia Hydra to put me at 2 because I knew that Josh Kill was at 30, and if, I, if it dealt any damage to me above 30, Josh would immediately die. It was awful. So I had swung out at Jimmy. I had 42 life. I had 42 life because I had gained life from Atraxa. I had Lightning Greaves on my general. My general was untapped and I was stupid and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take, well, I'm going to take my Lightning Greaves off my general and stick them on my Mana Gorger Hydra because he had been my man for the game and... I will. Putrefy Saskia. The most important cards I got to play actually are two of the cards that I would suggest taking out of the deck if you want to make it better, which is Duelist Heritage, where you get to choose an attack creature, get double strike, and Mirror Weave, which makes every creature you control a, tar a copy of target knowledge in their creature. So I use the Mirror Weave to make my Fathom Agent to a 10 10 with, with 16 plus 1 plus encounters, and I use the other card to give a double strike. And so I'm going to hit you for 52. Great. Dope. I'm dead. Fun game. So I had two creatures out, and Jimmy's at two life, but he has one untapped creature, which is Atraxa. So I swung with both, didn't really think about it. He's got lifelink on Atraxa, duh. Atraxa got so many abilities, and is so new. I was like, whatever, you're dead, right? And he was like, block, lifelink, and I was like, crap. Well, it turns out I had Rubble Hulk in my hand. A card I've never played, so I've been holding it in my hand since the very first turn, too, and I'm just thinking of it as a big creature, but it turns out that it's a really big giant growth. So it, it reads, you can pay a, a one, a red, and a green and discard Rubble Hulk from your hand and then target attacking creature gets plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is the number of lands you control. So if I just would have pumped up my other creature that he didn't block, it wouldn't matter how much life he gained because my other creature would have been like, a, you know, hit him for 11 or something. So I could have won, but um, I was dumb and I didn't. And then Jimmy, of course, turns his attracts a huge, gains a bajillion life. He played a Ikra Shadiki, gained a million life. It was over from that point. I had like one, it was like, you only got one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. I blew. I blew it. It was over. <laughs> All right. Well, that concludes game number one of the new Commander decks. It was super fun. Turned out pretty well. So for the second game, I chose Atraxa. That deck just seems really well set up. It seems like out of the box. The synergy is all there. I picked the ones with the weird names. I picked uh, Sidar Kondo of Jamura and Crown Ludovix Opus. I just wanted to try out the different generals. And like the white green one really seemed interesting because if you can make a lot of tokens and you know, just small stuff, you might be able to, you know, aggro somebody out. So I played Brea, the Artificer. One, she wasn't played in our last game, so I decided I'd pick her up. But also, I thought that the artifact theme and the fact that she has removal on herself seemed like it would be a good choice. So I had Idris, a uh, Maelstrom wielder, picked out for me uh, before someone had used partners in the deck. That's what Josh Kim did. So I decided to play Idris because I wanted to see what the Cascade Triggers were like. I started out 
pretty modestly. I think I got a commander sphere out. I was having a little bit of trouble trying to time win to play my bounce land because uh, I didn't want to have to discard a card. So the game played out, I had actually a pretty fast start because I dropped this two drop that lets me cast other artifact spells. Um, it's basically like a two mana dork, which is really, really powerful. I got out Hushring Griff super early. Oh, Ooh, well, boy. Yeah. well, I mean, you played. jerk. Just. It just wrecked me. I had all these. I had Trinket Mage in my hand. I wanted to play Brea. I had all these things I wanted to do stuff when they entered the battlefield. And Hushman Griff's like, Nah, dude, you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> so early in the game, Jimmy tears my heart out. I'm going to cast Decimate. Row, row. Three of them are coming at you, Josh. Why three? One, two, three. Ugh. So I got rid of my Citadel Siege, my Atraxa, and my uh, my Storage Land, which is really good with the Atraxa because it proliferates. And I'm like, What I do to you, dude? So I just. It was biding my time till I could get Jimmy back. Pass turn. Didn't play anything. Nope. I had all these like fog type effects, like uh, this dude who prevents who fogs, and then I put a plus one plus one counter on him for all the damage that he fogs. I played like three turns trying to play him, hoping like somebody would attack me with something huge. Got the combat. Well, we're gonna go. We're gonna cascade some stuff here. Swing at you for fun. <laughs> What did I do to you? Uh, I mean, nothing really. <laughs> so as I cast spells from my hand this turn. Each spell he casts will have Cascade. I got the Cascade with Idris. I played a Consuming Aberration, which then, because it's the card says when you cast your spell, uh, everyone mills. So because it had Cascade on it, it automatically triggers the text on it. So I got a Sangromancer off of that. So I played a Shy, and she's kind of like Manor Gorger Hydra, which we had in the first game. And just keeps growing and growing and growing. See, we're all friends again, right? Is how what? No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Jimmy had finally got this uh, set up for Idris where he had a Whisper Silk Cloak attached to it, and he just swings into me thinking that, hey, it's Shroud Unblockable. Uh, combat. But I had held this card in my hand called Grip of Phoresis. Phoresis? Phoresis? Uh, whatever, Phyrexians have weird names. Josh Kim stole my Whisper Silk Cloak, which was huge. And then I'll block. And then I had this first striker guy. Sad day. And that was a huge blowout for him. It was a bit tough. So Idris is dead, and the Jimmy Menace is ended. And then... <gasps> So I drew it off the top and the it was as though the rest of my hand melted away and just didn't exist. I think he says, uh, well, I don't know if this is correct, but I've never played this card before. So I'm just gonna play it. Whims of the face. <laughs> so this card basically says, everybody at the table takes all their permanents, everything, and splits them up into three piles. But you can make your piles empty. So Jimmy goes, I'm putting all my cards in one pile, and these two piles are empty. Every other player at the table besides me decided to dump all their permanents into one pile. Uh, what can happen? You know, two out of three ain't bad, right? A 33% chance of just straight losing the game is like, not very good odds. So I, I decided to go for a safer approach. And Josh Kim, of course, goes the safe and conservative route, and like, the responsible route. Obviously the smart choice is to like, you know, do it evenly or whatever, but I like to live life on the edge. So we all roll. So start with me then. Yeah. So oh, yours on, is one or two, one or two. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes! Uh, and uh, Jimmy rolls perfectly. I lost nothing. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if Craig, <laughs> Craig. Come on. Oh! <laughs> Would you do it again? Uh, no. Well, yeah, probably. I'll definitely do it again. Who am I kidding? Absolutely, I'll do it again. I'll do it every time, Josh. I promise you. <laughs> I was feeling pretty good, and then I had a 54-54 consuming aberration, and I swung out and killed Craig. Then I had a big turn where I managed to play Corpse Shack Menace into Deep Glow Skate. So Corpse Shack Menace, if a creature would get a 1-1 one -one counter, it gets twice that many counters. Then you play Deep Glow Skate, double the amount of counters on something, and then Corpse Jack's Menace doubles the amount that you would get from the double. Nice! Oh. So I went from 11 counters to 33 counters on a shy. Oh, Someone's gonna oh die my right god! Now. I think I'm gonna die right now. Wow. You're gonna die right now, Jimmy. I'm not, I do not forget the decimate. Wow. He swings in with 38 in the air, and I just couldn't do anything about it, and I was at 38. So I was able to pay Jimmy back for some injustices early in the game. Turns out that flyers are still good. 
And then the end of the game was really tight. Josh Kim managed to steal all my artifacts with this Hellkite Tyrant, which is really annoying because I have Astral Cornucopia with five counters on it, so that taps for five mana. So it sets me back a little bit. My line of thinking was, if I can just start recurring Brea over and over again, because I had Trading Post and Brea, and those two cards basically allow me to just continually recur Brea over and over again, and I thought, as long as uh, he didn't give the, the Big Bird unblockable or trample or anything like that, I could continually just block it while actually building out my board state. So I have this huge Ishai, which I talked about earlier, which is like, you know, it's like 40-40 or something. Swing in, he blocks with one Thopter, and I go to Mirror Weave it, which would turn it into a Hellkite Tyrant. The big thing about that was that the bird keeps all the plus one plus one counters that were on it. And so it's like a 46 trample. He's at 38 life, so it would kill him. But what he does is he trading posts his Hellkite Tyrant. So the Mirror Weave has nothing that it's targeting. And so fizzling the Mirror Weave and letting me survive that turn. So that kind of sucked. A big pun from my side was there's that one card that bolsters two when it enters the battlefield. Elite Scale Guard. But there's a second line of text where when creatures with plus one plus one counters uh, attack, you get to tap um, creatures from defending players. And I should have, in the start of combat, killed it so that I could at least block the big old bird that was attacking me. But I totally blanked on it and instead just had to take it all the damage and go down to one. So. Uh, that was really, really bad on my part. But it wasn't over yet. Josh Kim gets the Magus of the Will, the Yawgmoth's Will creature, and he's gonna replay Coastal Breach, which will basically return all Nightland permanents back to their owner's hand, which will reset my board totally, and send me back to the Stone Age. The Ishai will be like a 1-1 again, and there's only one player now, so it's never gonna grow that big. It's a bit, really big play, and I just happen to have the only counter spell, and I just stayed for stroke, and he's like, no! So I think he was forced to try and dig for his own counter spell in response and didn't find it. And that was kind of it. And after that, it was just pretty much over. None of us again drew our single target removal. That's two games in a row where we had one big threat growing and growing and nobody can really answer it. Any takeaways from Commander 2016 in general on the day? My overall impression that is that these pre-cut decks are all super, super fun. This felt like the most fun Commander set, like out of the box that I've played. One of the big things was that uh, in normal commander games, when people have very tuned decks, uh, big creatures feel like a liability sometimes. It paints a huge target on someone's head. Uh, and I actually like the fact that there's less answers for that because you can feel good about like swinging in with these giant uh, giant creatures and stuff. The four colors are great. They built the decks in a way that people were almost never really worried about their mana, which is awesome. All the new basic land cyclers are very, very effective in doing that. I would really recommend trying to play them this way before like taking them. We're all gonna take them and we're gonna take out the commanders we like and we're gonna build new decks, we're gonna tune them up and we're gonna do a lot of stuff. But don't for, don't skip this step, which is like get three or four of your friends, pull them straight out of the box, sleeve them up without changing them, you know, and play a couple rounds. If you want to get anyone into commander, this is the literal perfect time to do it. There's tons of value in all the cards and you can build two color commanders out of the four color set, you can build four colors, you can do three colors, you can do all sorts of different things with the combinations and the cards they give you. So it's like a very good starting point. I think looking back in history, we'll look at the first commander set and this one is two of the best ever made.